What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And this one I'm going to be talking about what's going on with the overall market and breakdown, how the technicals are looking. I'm also going to talk about the PCE report that just came out, which is actually not the best of reports. It was very close to expectations, but a tiny bit high on some different metrics. So we're going to break down what the inflationary data is suggesting, why this was not the best of news for the markets and the Fed, and what you should be watching for moving forward. But before I break anything down about all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo with the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed five free stocks with a $50 cash reward. The offer ends today in just about 18 hours, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, now let's talk about the market, how on earth are things looking. So I just wanted to break down with everyone something very, very important. When we look at SPY, we have a bearish divergence that has been developing on the MACD. Also on the RSI, you guys can notice right here, the RSI was making these highs right here. It's been on a downtrend. The RSI is downtrending, so is the MACD, while the price has been trending upwards. That's the first thing that's a bit of a red flag to me. And then when we look at the inflationary numbers, they were not that great. And let me show you exactly why that is. So uh, PCE, if you don't know what this is, this is just like CPI, another big inflationary measure that the Fed uses. When you look at the data, check this out. Uh, we were expecting 3.2 to 3.3% for uh, PCE year over year. It ended up being 3.3%, showing some signs that inflation not only increased compared to the previous report of 3%, which is now like, you know, 3.3%, but it's very close to expectations, a little bit on the hotter end of expectations. And then we have core PCE year over year. This was 4.2%. This is higher than what the forecast was, but very close to, to the consensus. So in my opinion, was this as expected? It was very close, but it did show an increase in core. When CPI came out, core was a little bit lower, and then CPI was uh, basically as expected, uh, or a little bit higher. And then for PCE, everything's like very close to expectations, but on the higher end, except core is showing signs of an increase. So there's a bit of a difference there. Core PCE is getting higher, and this is not at all what the Fed wants. The Fed is incentivized to be more hawkish. Now, initial jobless claims was also lower than expected, which is once again incentivizing the Fed to be more hawkish. So far, this is not the best of news for the Fed. The Fed may have to continue to you know, be hawkish, monitor this, and do what they have to do. You can see right here, uh, July PCE, you know, 4.2% versus 4.2%. 4 4.1% uh, was the prior. I actually saw it at like 4%. And then 3.3% uh, right over here is what uh, PCE happened to be, uh, very close to what the expectation was, but a little bit higher than the prior. So both sides are showing an increase in inflation. You guys can see this is also trending on Twitter right now. Increases in inflation are going on, and this is just not the best of news. The Fed also prefers PCE, and it ticked higher as inflation gets tougher. This is what the headlines are saying. Now, just a couple of other things before I talk about the charts. Uh, not so gloomy August. We're on the last day of August, so we will see how this ends up holding up for the markets. Uh, they're talking about how the jobs numbers were not the strongest yesterday, which is what the Fed wanted, which is good. Uh, besides that, Walmart is looking for ways to close its gap with its rival Amazon, and they're announcing new efforts to attract retailers. So interesting stuff so far. Also, don't forget about UBS, which had its earnings not too long ago, and it's Warren Buffett's birthday. Uh, I think his birthday was not too long ago. Anyways, all right, so enough about that. Now let's talk about the charts. Uh, I want to break down something very important. So when it comes to SPY, I'm not really liking how we're looking, in my opinion. I think that's I think that there's a possibility it goes a little bit higher, could push up a little bit more, but I think we're about to form a temporary top very soon. The market's going to start cooling off in a very healthy manner. I talked about two possibilities. One of them was we either gap up and then start dropping, or we kind of like gap down and start dropping from there, right? But it's looking like the red one, the red possibility is looking much more probable. We, we just gapped up already, and we're likely going to gap up in the morning. I think my prediction is we're going to see this thing start to cool off first. And either it pushes a little bit more, tries to get close to the four, five, threes, and then it starts cooling off, or just cools off from here, gets rejected. I think we're due for a cool off, and I think SPY is going to slowly start downtrending just a bit and get closer to like the 450 area, if not 448. I'm predicting that over the next couple of days, and I think the market's due for that pullback. It could pump a little bit more first before that happens, so just be open-minded. I'm leaning more in that direction because... 
Uh, PCE was technically as expected, but a little bit on the higher end. And we saw an increase month over month. So month over month, inflation went up, which is not good news whatsoever. Now for the triple Q, I talked about two possibilities. I had these drawn out yesterday. Whether we get the gap up or gap down scenario it depends on the PCE. So far, it's trying to like gap up. I know I had this drawn out a little higher. I mean, could we get a little closer to this like 380 area? It is possible. This pumps a little bit more, tries to get closer to like 378 or so before this thing ends up coming right back down. But in my opinion, I think the odds greatly favor uh, the possibility of this either holding this high right here and starting to downtrend or just pops one last time. We try to push a little bit more one last time before we end up coming down. And I, I just wanted to make it clear that I find this very probable. And there's going to likely be a, a rejection coming just like for Apple and many other tickers. So just want to be as honest as possible. Uh, could we go up to like 380? I'm not too sure about 380 at this point. We could go a tiny bit higher into the 378s, but I think we're going to get a rejection very soon and the QQQ is going to start cooling off. For NVIDIA, uh, how is NVIDIA looking? We might see the same thing with NVIDIA. I drew out the rising wedge on NVIDIA. Let's see how this is looking right now. Uh, I just want to mention that for NVIDIA, we had two possibilities. Either this thing is getting ready to break down from the rising wedge. It's starting to show some signs of weakness, or it just continues in the wedge a little bit higher before the break to the downside comes. Instead, this is looking less likely now, and it looks more like it's starting to break down. So we might see NVIDIA start to cool off a little bit, retest this 490 area. If that breaks, watch it come down to 4. 85 to 480 that would be completely normal now for apple i'm going to mention that apple could push us up a little bit higher before we come down or it could just be you know getting ready for downside it's got to be one of those two uh, I, i'm thinking that either apple is going to be uh down trending from here or we pop one last time we get one last pop into the, into like the 190 area we pop like another dollar and 50 cents uh, and then we come right back down. But it's looking like we might come short of filling this gap and we might just start downtrending from here. So I'm leaning more into the direction of this just like looking more like this or we just start sinking even sooner. So I'm leaning a little bit more uh, bearish for the market in a way, because I think that, yes, we could pop a little bit more, but we're likely going to see some downside. I think the market is just a do for that. And last but not least for Tesla, before I talk about any other tickers, Tesla is not looking... Uh, too bad in my opinion if you look at tesla it's it's forming a possible head and shoulders so that's one thing that concerns me a little bit uh it doesn't have to tank very very hard not necessarily and i would say that if anything tesla is actually looking a little bit weaker than the market so we could see this thing start sinking towards this 250 area might pop a little bit retest 257 then start sinking towards this 250 area and we're gonna have to see if 250 could hold on tesla over the next couple of days if that breaks we might see tesla start to cool off even more so i just want to make it clear there's a possible head and shoulders on tesla uh the market is showing some signs of weakness uh, I just want to make it clear that we're, we're not truly like tanking or anything like that just yet, but we do have a triple bearish divergence on SPY and the market's been pumping like crazy with almost no pullbacks. The market is due for it. Uh, Apple could have us pump one more time. We could get one little pump on SPY one last time before I think this thing is going to start cooling off in a very healthy manner. I think the PCE numbers, inflationary numbers are not the best and the market has to be very careful. All right, guys, so hopefully this video was helpful. I want the best for everyone. I want to make all these technical predictions very clear. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you and peace out.